Welcome, Welcome everyone. everyone. I am a PhD student, student, student at Stellenbosch University, and my project is focused on the bioacoustics of the Indian Ocean humpback dolphin in southern Africa, and using potential signature whistles as individual markers for monitoring. This presentation will present some of the pilot work that I've been involved in over the past year in exploring signature whistle use in this species, and also whether signature whistles are suitable for market capture studies. There are four species of humpback dolphin globally. Recent genetic work has separated Sousa chinensis into two separate species, with the Indian Ocean humpback dolphins now a separate species. Sousa chinensis originally was thought to range throughout the Indian Ocean. However, Mendez's house work has shown distinction in the Western Indian Ocean population. Now the two species are separated at the Bay of Bengal. Both are threatened, the Sousa plumbea class is endangered, and Sousa chinensis class is vulnerable on the IOCN red list. In addition, South Africa has recently uplisted Sousa plumbea to endangered on the local IOCN red list assessment. Sousa are a globally threatened genus and all four species undergo similar threats due to their extreme coastal habitat. So here in South Africa, Sousa plumbea is split into two main subpopulations. You have one off the Cape South Coast and a second along the Northeast Coast with connectivity low between the two. As identified on this map, research hotspots have focused on separate regions over the past 30 years. These studies have all been limited by scale and recapture rates. Bermulin et al. 2017 was the first study to, which collated available photographic data nationally to look at movement and put the national abundance estimate at around 500 individuals. Normal monitoring approaches are incredibly inefficient for coastal dolphin species and still much remains unknown in how individuals use this coastline. There is especially a lack of data for the Cape South Coast. Therefore, improved methods are needed to effectively identify and monitor individuals in South Africa to better inform conservation measures. So when we're working with such low numbers of humpback dolphins, we really need to innovate to obtain better data. Humpback dolphins rely heavily on vocal channels for communication and exploration of their environment. They are also unique mammals in which they have signature whistles. These are learned individually distinctive whistles that broadcast the identity of the owner to conspecifics. So acoustic monitoring offers cost-effective options for detecting animals along the coast, particularly in water with low visibility, such as estuaries and sheltered bays. There's actually been over 50 years of signature whistle research in common bottlenose dolphins. However, it's important to note that actually when we're looking to identify these in other species, we have to be really careful in our assessment and the criteria that we actually use. So acoustic monitoring using signature whistles was actually first suggested by Terry et al. in 2005 and again by Yannick et al. in 2013. But it still largely remains untested, especially in other delphinid species. It was Longton et al. in 2020 who actually first demonstrated the potential power of using signature whistles as proxies for individual occurrence and in market capture abundance estimations. But the paper also was important in that it highlighted challenges in using this approach. London's work focused on a known, well-researched population of bottlenose dolphins in Namibia, as indicated by the discovery curve here. In the bar graph on the right, you can see the number of whistle repeats of each signature whistle type ranged widely for each encounter, indicating substantial variation in vocal behavior between individuals and encounters. So the study highlighted the importance of array location, but also the requirement of a really good understanding of vocal behavior in your species. So for my project, I'm going to be taking this work forwards and I'm hoping to use the recapture of humpback dolphin signature whistles to monitor the species at a national level within South Africa. To confirm method feasibility, I've been conducting pilot studies and the available data so far. Although there have been signature whistles reported in other species of species from opportunistic data, I here aim to provide additional evidence of potential signature whistle use in free-ranging populations. And then continuing to build on Longdon et al's work, I'll be exploring temporal and geographic stability of these signature whistle types to ensure that recaptures of individuals are possible based on passive acoustic monitoring. To start with, I was looking for preliminary evidence of stereotyped whistle use in free swimming individuals. This first section will actually use data that I collected in southern Mozambique earlier this year of full bandwidth recordings plus video of an individual humpback dolphin called Hermie. The total length of recording of Hermie was 15 minutes and 55 seconds. 
and over 80% of the whistles he produced were the same stereotype whistle that you can see here in the spectrogram. There are some variation in the stereotype whistle seen, and I think this is because of the excitement levels of the dolphins with us in the water. So stick ID analysis was developed by Yannick et al in 2013 for using common bottlenose dolphins. But I decided to try and put the stereotype whistles from Hermy through this belt analysis to see what came through. So when I put it through, I found that it did meet the um, analysis for SIG ID. And as each bout had five to eight whistle repeats with appreciable breaks between bouts, and the interwhistle interval within bouts was less than 10 seconds for every interwhistle interval except one. In addition to the in-water data I collected in early 2020, I was also provided with archival GoPro footage of Hermie from 2009 to 2019. I identified whistles based on bubble emissions and extracted stereotype whistles that matched my signature whistle type from February 2020. Long-term stability from this signature whistle type was demonstrated across the 11 years. This is the longest temporal stability shown in a stereotype whistle in an Indian Ocean humpback dolphin. My colleague Natasha is working on further investigation into temporal production of whistle in humpback dolphins in Richards Bay, and she's going to be talking about this tomorrow morning. Overall, this data provides early evidence for stable long-term stereotype whistle use that fits SIG ID bout analysis from an individual in a species. Seeing as it is only one individual, more work is obviously needed throughout the coastline amongst a much larger sample size to further confirm and investigate signature whistle types for the use in Indian Ocean humpback dolphins. So my next objective was to investigate signature whistle types in the greater proportion of the population and their potential use in mark recapture studies. So I used boat-based recordings of humpback dolphins collected over the past four years from five different geographic locations. I chose these locations in the because they were present in the National Movement Study by Vermeulen et al. in 2017. I used acoustic data recorded in False Bay, Strayers Bay, St. Sebastian Bay and Mossel Bay and identified 21 potential signature whistle types from 18 hours and 43 minutes of recordings. I then looked at their geographic stability and found three of these whistle types recaptured across different geographic locations. So you can see here, this map is from Vermeulen et al on the right and shows the 13 locations included in the study and below it, the number of individuals recaptured by photographic ID between each location. So next to this, I've shown my recaptures via signature whistle types that we detected between these locations. The first one we found was signature whistle type nine in Strayers Bay in 2017, and it was found recaptured in St. Sebastian Bay in 2019, a distance of 100 kilometers. So the second recapture we found was for signature whistle type 12, and it was this was actually recaptured a few weeks apart in St. Sebastian Bay in September, and then recaptured again in Mossel Bay in October last year. Our furthest recapture was signature whistle type 5, which was recorded 400 kilometers apart in False Bay in 2016, and the whistle was encountered three years later in Mossel Bay in 2019. This is again early days and with a limited data size, but it's encouraging that we were able to confirm recaptures of signature whistle types across locations and years from the Cape South Coast subpopulation. The data used to form this catalogue was based on boat-based recordings, where we re-recorded groups during focal follows. For signature whistles to be used in long-term monitoring studies, I will be using a network of moored hydrophones instead. I compared my signature whistle types collected from boat-based recordings to moored hydrophone data that was collected concurrently to see if signature whistle types were also present in the PAM recordings. I analysed 10 hours of data of moored hydrophone data and 144 humpback dolphin whistles were identified in total. In our catalogue, four of the signature whistle types are from the northeast coast population. 44 of the 144 whistles identified match two whistle types in our catalogue, signature whistle types 30 and 32, highlighting the fact that PAM could be as effective as boat-based recordings in signature whistle identification. So overall, it's really important to note that this is actually very early days and this pilot data demonstrates examples of stereotype whistle use in my data set. However, further work is needed to confirm the use and function of signature whistles in this species in South Africa. So can signature whistle types be used in mark recapture studies in South Africa? Maybe. <laughs> the temporal and geographic stability in signature whistle types is promising, and I'm hoping to further expand this work 
and actually include photographic identification from each of these locations to confirm individual movement. Ultimately, I'll be using long-term PAM arrays to monitor humpback dolphins around South Africa, and the identification of signature whistle types in both data sets is promising. So as a preliminary study and pilot data, the results are encouraging, and I do look forward to building on this work in the future. The scale of this work has meant that I've been lucky to work with some great collaborators over the past year, and I would like to thank them all for their support and collaboration in this project. Thank you all for listening, and I look forward to taking your questions.